ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम लालेमा अनेजा डैंग एंड विद मी इज सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ नेशन वाइड अनलॉक विद रिलैक्सेशन इन सेवरल एक्टिविटीज बिगिन्स टूडे Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people not to lower guard in their fight against COVID-19. Railways to run 200 special trains across the country from today. Second phase of Operation Samudra Setu begins. INS Jal Shiva to evacuate 700 Indians from Colombo this evening. 14 special flights to bring home more than 2000 Indian nationals from Gulf countries under the Vande Bharat mission. and met department warns of a cyclone in coastal maharashtra and gujarat the first phase of nation wide unlock starts today unlock 1 will allow a phased reopening of most activities across india center on saturday unlock 1 guidelines limiting the lockdown only to the containment zones government also allowed unfettered movement of goods and persons between states and within states several states have also released guidelines for the fifth phase of lockdown or unlock 1 prime minister narendra modi has urged people to be more alert and careful in their fight against covid-19 as country prepares to unlock in his man ki baat program mr modi said becoming careless or lackadaisical cannot be an option he said as economic activities have resumed social distancing has become even more important now prime minister said there should be no laxity and people should maintain do gaj ki duri wear face masks and stay at home to the extent possible is baar bahut kuch khul chuka hai shramik special trains chal rahi hain anya special trains bhi shuru ho gayi hain tamam savdhaniyon ke sath hawai jahaz udne lage hain dheere dheere उद्योग भी चलना शुरू हुआ है यानी अर्थव्यवस्था का एक बड़ा हिस्सा अब चल पड़ा है खुल गया है ऐसे में हमें और ज्यादा सतर्क रहने की आवश्यकता है दो गज की दूरी का नियम हो मुंह पर मास्क लगाने की बात हो हो सके तो वहां तक घर में रहना हो ये सारी बातों का पालन उसमें जरा भी ढिलाई नहीं बरतनी चाहिए The prime minister said after so many hardships the country's deft handling of the situation should not go in vain. He said the road ahead is a long one and we are fighting a pandemic about which little was previously known. The prime minister hailed the spirit of service shown by the people and called it the biggest strength. He said seva paramo dharma service is a joy in itself is a way of life in India. Tamam chunautiyon ke beech mujhe khushi hai कि आत्मनिर्भर भारत पर आज देश में व्यापक मंथन शुरू हुआ है लोगों ने अब इसे अपना अभियान बनाना शुरू किया है इस मिशन का नेतृत्व देशवासी अपने हाथ में ले रहे हैं बहुत से लोगों ने तो ये भी बताया है कि उन्होंने जो जो सामान उनके इलाके में बनाए जाते हैं उनके पूरी लिस्ट बना ली है ये लोग अब इन लोकल प्रोडक्ट्स को ही खरीद रहे हैं और वोकल फॉर लोकल को प्रमोट भी कर रहे हैं मेक इन इंडिया को बढ़ावा मिले इसके लिए सब कोई अपना अपना संकल्प जता रहा है महाराष्ट्र रिकॉर्डेड 2,487 फ्रेश केसेस ऑफ कोविड 19 येस्टरडे विद दिस द टोटल नंबर ऑफ कोविड 19 पेशेंट्स टिल डेट स्टैंड्स एट 65,168 Meanwhile the Maharashtra government has decided to extend the ongoing lockdown till June the 30th Maharashtra chief minister Uddhav Thakre laid down the road map of the exit from lockdown in a phase wise manner in the red zones of Mumbai metropolitan region more in this report In the phase wise opening which will begin from June 3rd our peace and a outdoor physical activities activities related to self employed people like plumbers electricians and technicians are being permitted apart from this private offices can operate up to 10% of their total manpower strength van or newspaper home delivery is also listed all markets and shops will also be allowed to open from June 5 on the odd even basis in non containment zones 
intra district bus services will be allowed with maximum 50% capacity but inter district bus services will remain barred as of now the government has decided against reopening educational institutions and operations of international air travel metro rail passenger movement by train and domestic air travel unless specially allowed through separate orders and standard operating procedure nivedika air news mumbai Telangana government has extended lockdown till 30th of June in containment zones. After a high level meeting, Chief Minister K Chandrasekhar Rao has initially announced extension of lockdown in the state till 30th of June. However, later a government order has been issued stating that the lockdown has been extended in the identified containment zones till the end of June. It says the guidelines issued by the center will be in force in other areas till 7th June. The chief minister's office has clarified later that the strict lockdown will be in force in containment zones till the end of June. However, the night curfew will be in place from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. and the restrictions on interstate movement of people have been lifted. Meanwhile, Telangana continued to witness surge in coronavirus positive cases, especially in Hyderabad, with 199 positive cases reported yesterday on a single day. More from our correspondent. The number of COVID-19 cases being reported in Telangana state, especially in the capital city Hyderabad, is continuously on the rise ever since the relaxations announced during the lockdown four. Yesterday alone, 199 fresh COVID cases have been reported, taking the total reported cases in the state to 2,698. According to the official bulletin, out of the fresh cases, 122 reported from Hyderabad alone, while 74 others reported from 11 other districts in the state. Three cases reported among migrant workers who are coming to the state from various parts of the country. Lakshmi, AIR News, Hyderabad. In conformity with the center's announcements, the Tamil Nadu government has also extended lockdown till June end. However, additional relaxations have been announced for the areas outside the containment zones. Places of worship, hotels and hospitality and entertainment services, shopping malls and educational institutions will remain closed throughout the state till 12 p.m. on June the 30th. Chief Minister Edapadi Palani Swami has said in a statement that metro and suburban rail services would also be suspended till then. Interstate regular bus services and international flights will also remain suspended. Meanwhile, Tamil Nadu has recorded the steepest ever single day spike in COVID-19 yesterday. 1149 people have tested positive in the state, including 804 in Chennai. Yesterday's mortality also remains the highest with 13 people losing their lives, taking the total to 173. Here's more from a correspondent. The Madras High Court reopens today. The judges will be in the court halls hearing the cases. However, due to the pandemic conditions in Chennai, the hearing would be initially made through video conferencing, as decided by the High Court Administrative Committee led by Chief Justice Amreshwar Pradap Sahi. The advocates will be participating in the hearings through online mode. The physical functioning of its Madurai bench and its subordinate courts would also be resumed in a staggered way. The High Court Madurai bench will have a maximum of 5 lawyers in a court hall and a maximum of 10 cases per bench would be taken. Jai Singh, AAR News, Chennai. 200 special trains will run across the country from today. These services will be in addition to Shramik special trains and 30 special AC trains. Railway Ministry said more than 1 lakh 45 thousand passengers will travel on day one. Around 26 lakh passengers have booked their tickets for advance reservation period 1st to 30th June. These trains are fully reserved trains having both AC and non-AC classes. General coaches have reserved sitting accommodation. Our correspondent reports that there will be no unreserved coach in the train. The passengers will have to reach the station 90 minutes in advance to facilitate thermal screening at the station. All passengers will be screened and only asymptomatic passengers will be allowed to board the train. Only passengers with confirmed and RC ticket will be allowed to enter the railway station and board the train. All passengers will have to wear face masks and observe social distancing during travel. On arrival at their destination, the traveling passengers will adhere to such health protocols as are prescribed by the destination state and union territories. No linen, blankets and curtains will be provided inside the train. Use of Aarogya Setu app will be mandatory for all passengers. With Dipendra Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. 
Online booking of tickets for these trains is being done through IRCTC website or through mobile app. Railways has also allowed booking of reservation tickets through the reservation counters, common service centers and ticketing agents. Booking of Tatkal ticket can be done from 29 June or journey date 30th June and onwards. Health Ministry has said that the recovery rate of patients from COVID-19 infection has now gone up to 47.76%. In the last 24 hours, 4,614 patients were found cured. A cumulative total of around 87,000 people have been cured so far. The Ministry said the government has taken several steps along with the states and union territories for prevention, containment and management of COVID-19. These are being regularly reviewed and monitored at the highest level. The number of cases under active medical supervision is around 90,000. News Services Division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program held a special discussion program on COVID-19. Participating in the program, Dr. Raman R. Ganga Kherkar, Head Scientist, Epidemiology and Communicable Diseases Division, ICMR, said... After the relaxations in lockdown, everyone will have to be more cautious while returning to their normal life. हर लोगों ने दिमाग में ये डाल लेना है सरकार ने ढील दी ये समझ के ढील दी है कि जो आदमी बाहर निकलेगा वो सारे एहतियात बरतेगा अभी भी कोरोना वायरस तो गया नहीं है हर इंसान ने ये सोचना है अगर समाज में ये फैलने नहीं देना है बीमारी तो हमको खुद को मास्क पहन के बाहर निकलना पड़ेगा दो गज की दूरी रखना पड़ेगा अपने सेहत का ख्याल रखने के लिए अपने हाथ और मुंह दोनों का संबंध जितना हो सके उतना टालना है और हाथ साफ करते रहना है डॉक्टर रमन गंगा खेड़कर सेट ऑल एफर्ट्स आर बिंग मेड टू डेवेलप अ वैक्सीन इन अ शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम आम तौर पे जब हम वैक्सीन की खोज किया करते थे तो तकरीबन 10 से 15 साल लगते थे अभी इतना टाइम तो हमारे पास है नहीं तो वो कम करके वो तकरीबन डेढ़ साल तक करने की कोशिश सब तरफ चल रही है कोई वैक्सीन की खोज हो The new services division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone in program will bring you a special discussion on program on COVID-19. Dr. Naresh Gupta, senior physician from Molana Azad Medical College, will participate in the discussion. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll-free telephone number 18001-115767. You may also ask questions on telephone number 011-2331-4444 and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal has said that pharmaceutical industry has an important role to play in Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Interacting with the leaders in the pharmaceutical industry and office bearers of the Pharma Association through the video conference, Mr. Goyal lauded the pharma industry for making India proud by rising to the occasion during the COVID crisis. He said that India has been recognized as the pharmacy of the world as over 120 countries got some essential medicines during the last two months. He said the whole world appreciated India's gesture and this has swelled India's goodwill and reputation. The minister assured them that the government will fully support the industry's expansion, diversification and strengthening. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. First phase of nationwide unlock with relaxations in several activities begins today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people not to lower guard in their fight against COVID-19. Railways to run 200 special trains across the country from today. Second phase of Operation Samudra Setu begins. INS Jalashwa to evacuate 700 Indians from Colombo this evening. 14 special flight to bring home more than 2,000 Indian nationals from Gulf countries under Vande Bharat mission. And Med Department warns of a cyclone in coastal Maharashtra and Gujarat. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. Indian Navy ship INS Jalashwa will sail from Colombo port in Sri Lanka today, carrying around 700 Indian nationals back to Tutikorin in Tamil Nadu. This will be the first operation as part of Operation Samudra Setu from Sri Lanka to repatriate Indian citizens as part of Vande Bharat mission. 
The ship will reach Colombo this morning and will depart by late evening. Indian High Commission in Colombo is making final arrangements for the repatriation with support of Sri Lankan Navy and other authorities. COVID-related social distancing norms have been created on board and evacuees would be provided basic amenities and medical facilities during the sea passage. Indian Navy has already repatriated 1,488 Indian nationals from Mali to Kochi during the previous phase of operations. INS Jalashwa is scheduled to bring back another 700 Indian nationals from the Maldives capital of Mali on Friday and preparations regarding it are also on. Fourteen special flights will bring home more than 2,000 Indian nationals from Gulf countries under the Vande Bharat mission today. Eight flights are scheduled from UAE. Six flights will take off from Dubai to Kochi, Kanur, Korikor, Thiruvananthapuram, Goa and Gaya. Two flights are scheduled from Abu Dhabi, one to Kochi and the other to Kanur. From Saudi Arabia, there are two flights, Riyadh to Lucknow and Dhamam to Gaya via Delhi. Kuwait has one flight for Thiruvananthapuram and Bahrain has one flight to Kochi. Muscat has two flights to Korikor and Kanur. Yesterday, approximately 2,500 stranded Indians were brought home by special flights from the Gulf countries. Priority is being given to distressed workers, stranded tourists, pregnant women, medical emergency cases and senior citizens. Ahead of his virtual meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has shared pictures of samosas, saying he would have liked to share the popular snack with Mr. Modi. Replying to Mr. Morrison on Twitter, Prime Minister Modi said, The two countries are connected by the Indian Ocean, united by the Indian Samosa. He said, Once we achieve a decisive victory against COVID-19, we will enjoy the samosas together. Mr. Modi said he is looking forward to the video meet on the 4th of June. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the Silver Jubilee celebrations of Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences Today, the Bengaluru-based medical university has completed 25 years of its formation and Prime Minister will take part in the celebrations through video conferencing. Karnataka Medical Education Minister Dr. K. Sudhakar said that the university is working towards realizing the dream of Prime Minister to make country self-sufficient in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. He further added that 2.5 lakh students and 23,000 teaching faculties of the Health Sciences University have joined the battle against coronavirus. As part of the inauguration, the university has organized two endowment lectures on the impact of COVID-19. Uttar Pradesh has become the first state in the country to prepare one lakh beds for COVID-19 patients with each of the 75 districts having dedicated beds for patients in their respective facilities. The beds in the hospitals are classified into three categories, level 1, level 2 and level 3. While level 1 and 2 beds are for patients exhibiting mild symptoms, level 3 beds are meant for graver infections. Our correspondent has the details. The hospitals catering to level 1 patients will have facilities for oxygen support. Those catering to level 2 patients will have a few ventilators in addition to oxygen support. And level 3 hospitals will have ventilator support as well as ICU facilities for the patients besides having provisions for dialysis. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has already ordered setting up of testing labs in each of the 75 districts and increase the daily number of tests to 20,000 a day in June month. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Bihar, the number of corona positive cases have gone up to 3,807 with reporting of 242 fresh cases during the 24 hours. This is the highest number of fresh cases in a single day. 1,520 patients have recovered so far and have been discharged from hospitals. 2,264 patients are undergoing treatment in various hospitals. In Madhya Pradesh, despite the banks opening during the corona transition period, it is a difficult task to move from rural areas to urban area banks. In such a situation, 651 bank sakhi, banking correspondents, have taken up the task of providing bank facilities door-to-door -door in rural areas. The villagers are also happy to get all the banking facilities, including transition of money, at their home.
मोर देन थर्टी टू लाख ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड वुमेन आर एसोसिएटेड एज मेंबर्स इन टू लाख एटी सेवन थाउजेंड सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप इन मध्य प्रदेश एजुकेटेड वुमेन ऑफ दीज ग्रुप आर दियर डॉटर्स हैव बीन लिंक टू नेशनलाइज बैंक एज बैंक सखी बैंक सखी अनिता नागडी एस सेट मैं गाँव गाँव जाके बैंक सखी का काम करती हूँ घर घर जाके पेंशन जनधन और किसान सम्मान निधि के पैसे निकालती हूँ ताकि गाँव के लोगों को बैंक तक न आना पड़े और उनको बैंक की सुविधाएं घर पे मिलती रहे विलेजर शंभूलाल सोलंकी सेट ये जो बैंक सखी है ना ये गाँव में घर घर आके हमारे जो सरकारी योजनाओं के पैसे वो घर पे आके निकाल देती है इससे हमको बैंको के चक्कर नहीं काटने पड़ते है भीड़ बढ़ा के इलाके ऐसी वो बच जाते हैं इससे हमको बहुत फायदा हुआ ड्यूरिंग लॉकडाउन पीरियड द बैंक सखी प्रोवाइडेड एन अमाउंट ऑफ रूपीज सिक्सटी टू करोड़ ट्वेंटी थ्री लाख टू द रिस्पेक्टिव अकाउंट होल्डर्स इन रूरल एरिया थ्री लाख थर्टी फोर थाउजेंड बैंक ट्रांजेक्शन हैव बीन डन बाई सिक्स हंड्रेड फिफ्टी वन बैंक सखीज इन द स्टेट संजीव शर्मा ए आई आर न्यूज भोपाल इन गुजरात द डेथ टोल ड्यू टू कोविड नाइन्टीन हैज गॉन अप टू वन थाउजेंड थर्टी एट विथ थर्टी वन न्यू डेथ रिपोर्टेड ड्यूरिंग लास्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स ट्वेंटी पेशेंट्स डाइड इन अहमदाबाद अलोन more from a correspondent number of active cases in the state are decreasing with more patients are being discharged from the hospitals with 689 patients discharged yesterday the total number of discharged patients after recovery has gone up to 9919 meanwhile new guidelines for unlock 1 is being effective from today state transport buses will operate with 60% capacity while city bus services will run with 50% passengers state government has issued the new list of containment zones in which number of houses and its population have been put under the restrictions instead of entire areas or wards yogesh pandya air news ahmedabad amid covid-19 the new academic year begins in kerala today completely online using multiple virtual platforms here's more from a correspondent The 45 lakh students in the state-run schools will start their classes from today through television and online platforms. The CBC schools and colleges across the state too will begin their virtual classes from today. The Victors Channel, which functions under the State General Education Department, will telecast the learning sections from classes 1 to 12. The sections named First Bell will be from 8:30 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. on weekdays. The class teachers will be in touch with students on social media platforms or phones on a regular basis. The Victors Channel is made available on all cable and direct to home television networks. Classes will also be streamed online on YouTube and Samagra portal. The government has assured that arrangements would be made for students who have no access to television and internet to be included in the virtual learning exercise. Mayusha Foya news from Tiruvannathapuram. Music composer, director and singer Wajid Khan died due to COVID-19 last night. The 42-year-old music composer was also suffering from kidney ailments and had undergone a kidney transplant a few months ago. He was rushed to a hospital in Mumbai's Chembur after his condition deteriorated. Wajid Khan of the famous Sajid Wajid music composer duo composed most of the songs of actor Salman Khan's movies. Narendra Modi government has completed the first year of its second term in office. During this period, the government has taken many steps for the empowerment of minority communities. Let's hear a report on this. The Minority Affairs Ministry has provided skill development training, employment and employment opportunities to lakhs of minority youth through schemes like Ustad Garib Nawaz Self Employment Scheme, Sikh Hoor Kamao and Nayi Manzil. More than 50% beneficiaries of the schemes are girls. Thousands of healthcare assistants who have been trained under skill development program of the ministry are assisting in treatment and well-being of corona patients. Through Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram, government has developed socio economic educational and employment oriented infrastructure across the country in minority concentrated areas these projects include educational institutions health projects market sheds toilet and water facilities and working women hostels ministry of minority affairs is organizing hunar haat at various places across the country to provide market and opportunities to master artisans craftsmen and culinary experts students from six notified minority communities parsi jain buddhist sikh christian and muslim have been provided pre matric post matric merit ka means begum hazrat mahal girls scholarships school dropout of muslim girls which were earlier 72% has come down to 32% geo tagging and digitization of work properties across the country has ensured utilization of it for welfare of the society anupam mish ar news delhi 
Two officials of the Pakistan High Commission in New Delhi were apprehended yesterday by Indian law enforcement authorities for indulging in espionage activities. The government has declared both these officials persona non grata for indulging in activities incompatible with their status as members of a diplomatic mission and asked them to leave the country within 24 hours. In a statement, the Ministry of External Affairs said Pakistan's charge d'affaires was issued a demarche in which a strong protest was lodged with regard to the activities of these officials of the High Commission of Pakistan against India's national security. India Meteorological Department has issued a red color coded warning to coastal Maharashtra and Gujarat for June the 4th in view of a cyclonic storm in the Arabian Sea. Fishermen who have ventured into the Arabian Sea along the north and south Gujarat coasts have been advised to return and not go out till June the 4th. IMD's Cyclone Warning Division said a low pressure is currently over East Central Arabian Sea and the Lakshadweep Islands. It is likely to intensify into a depression in the next 12 hours and a cyclonic circulation in the next 24 hours. A low pressure area is the first stage of any cyclone. The IMD has four color coded warnings as per the intensity of any weather system green, yellow, orange, and the last one being red. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will witness minimum temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and maximum 38 with generally cloudy sky and light rain or drizzle. Mumbai will witness generally partly cloudy sky. The maximum temperature will be around 35 degrees Celsius while minimum will be around 29. In the south, Chennai will see a partly cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 29 and 39 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will also witness generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. On to the north, in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was 22 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while maximum will be around 35. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature was 12 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 22 degrees. In Gilgit, the temperature will hover between 15 and 24 degrees Celsius. The region will have thunderstorm with rain. In Muzaffarabad, there will be partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night. It witnessed minimum temperature of 17 degrees Celsius, while maximum should be around 24 degrees Celsius. SpaceX Dragon spacecraft with two NASA astronauts successfully docked with the International Space Station last night after a historic launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It has marked the dawn of a new age in commercial space travel. L. Musk's SpaceX company confirmed the successful docking of NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley with the ISS, the orbiting laboratory, after traveling 19 hours. NASA Administrator Jib Bridiston called the station from the Space Agency's Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas. Bridiston said, We are so, so proud of everything you've done for our country and, in fact, to inspire the world. And now, let's take an overview of today's newspapers. Let's not be complacent. Long battle ahead, Modi, is the Hindustan Times headline quoting the Indian PM on COVID pandemic in its monkey bath broadcast yesterday. The Indian Express quotes U.S. President Donald Trump as saying that G7 is very outdated now and he would like India, Australia, South Korea and Russia to be a part of G10 and G11. Nepal tables bill to alter map amid row, opposition on board, government set to amend constitution to claim key areas, is the Tribune headline. The pioneer quotes the WHO as saying that mothers with small infants should continue to breastfeed even if they are themselves affected by COVID-19. Most newspapers have reported the death of the noted architect Pradeep Sashteva, aged 62, an IIT Rurki alumnus. He would often use local construction materials and techniques to create something extraordinary. Delhi Hut, Garden of Five Senses in Delhi, were some of his well-known buildings. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. First phase of nationwide unlock with relaxations in several activities begins today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people not to lower guard in their fight against COVID-19. Railways to run 200 special trains across the country from today. Second phase of Operation Samudra Setu begins. INS Jalashwa to evacuate 
700 Indians from Colombo this evening. 14 special flights to bring home more than 2,000 Indian nationals from the Gulf countries under the Vande Bharat mission. And Met Department warns of a cyclone in the coastal in coastal Maharashtra and Gujarat. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.